Greetings. Um, welcome to another episode of Art Matters. I'm Wayne Quackenbush, your host. Uh, I'm also the CEO of the Portsmouth Arts Guild, and I have a place in Newport where I show local artists. Today, our first guest is Paula de Sano Santos, and she's a science teacher in uh, Providence. So she teaches in high school at a high school there. And she's also an artist that I've known for a number of years. I think we first met either through the Portsmouth Arts Guild or Ricky Gagnon's New Hope Gallery. Well, good morning. And it was a little bit of both. I, uh -huh. um, I signed up at the Guild, and then I ran into you shortly after that, probably within a week or so. And I was like, oh, that's Wayne. I know Wayne yeah. at uh, New Hope Art Gallery. And we've so. also been traveling in the same circles for a number of years now. I've run into you at the Newport Art Museum and the figure yes. drawing classes there. Yes, yes, I did do a figure, figure drawing there. Mm -hmm. And I'm continuing that now um, with a couple of classes in Providence, right. working with an artist, Kate Huntington, yep. who got me back into the figure drawing, so that's good. Yep. Yeah. And we just began a pretty fascinating conversation about uh, both Thomas Cole and your experience with expressive arts yes. through Salve Regina. Yes. And um, you note Thomas Cole as one of your influences. At Thomas Cole was my first influence. I was um, at Rhode Island's at RISD Museum. Mm -hmm. And um, his painting was one of the first paintings I saw that I went, wow. And I loved it, and I went over and I, I read it, and what really got my attention was, I'm like, oh my God, this is the Catskills, you know? And then okay. there was another one in um, New Hampshire. So I started studying him, and um, now, this past September, I visited his estate and gallery. Now, for those of us that not in the know, he was, uh, when, when did he work? And did he work in the um, Northeast mostly here? He was actually originally from England. Uh -huh came to the United States, uh, worked the whole New England area, mm -hmm. and uh, I think he was born in 1801 to 1848. Okay. He started what was called the Hudson River School oh, of course, yes. in Hudson, New York. Right. And uh, one of his mentors was Frederick Church, and they worked very closely together. Yes. Um, so there's a place called Alana, which is across the river from Thomas Cole's place, so it's just a plethora of artwork okay. right in that tiny area. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm familiar with the Hudson River School. I kind of grew up there, so ah. they kind of cool. taught us all about that. Ah. So you were describing his landscapes as, as being rather magical, that he, he brought uh, yes. elements out of it that you might not normally see with the naked eye, or he, he found the right well, light, maybe. You're right. He loved the rawness <coughs> uh -huh. of New England because when he was here, I mean, we were just pioneering the area. Mm -hmm. And um, he would paint, and he really did like that magical, spiritual element of nature. Yes. Uh, he idealized the colors almost. Mm -hmm. um, and then when he brought them to England, they were unimaginable to the people there. They there were weren't like, landscapes like that in exactly, England. Yeah. Exactly. The, the light's completely different there. Uh, yeah. physical features are completely different. Yeah. There's, they don't have the same kind of mountains. And, You're right. Yeah. You're right. So um, I just loved it. I just loved it. It captured my attention. Um, I could relate to the areas because these are the places that I visit, especially to decompress. So yes. um, I just took it from there. Now, speaking of which, uh, decompressing, you were talking about the painting that's over here on the easel. Yes and how that is not only influenced by Thomas Cole, but it also ties in with your work and practice in the expressive arts. Exactly, exactly. The expressive arts I studied at Salve um, University, and it has to do with just, um, it's a type of therapy that's a little bit gestalt, <coughs> pardon me, and a little bit of a free association. Mm -hmm. And it's like bringing what's in the subconscious, and we titrate it out a little bit at the time to work on different things. And every time I would do a meditation and a calming, um, and just find where the most tense part of my body was, it would always be in my lower abdomen. 
and the waterfall section with the rocks, that would always come out. And so when I started to learn how to paint, I would, um, I did this, I had an instructor, and she said that I could only work with like five colors. A limited palette. Exactly. Yes. And so I started with that, that's what started coming out. And I actually did my own therapy. <laughs> As, as right, I because you said that, that you were associating the imagery that you brought out here with pressure in your body or a yes. sense of something within your yes. body. Yes, yep, mm -hmm. yes. And then she said, okay, you can add some color now. So that's where I got the green trees. And that was really the only color I popped out was the green. Everything else was from the limited palette. Right, but that's not an actual location. That no. is That's a psychic... This landscape. is Imaginary Falls. <laughs> right, that's, what, that's the actual title of the yes. piece. Yes, it is. Uh -huh. And um, some of the brushwork is a Thomas Cull influence. Um, he really had dramatic clouds, um, very stormy looking mm -hmm. with turmoil. Mm -hmm. um, he really loved the, 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 raw, the rawness of nature. Right. So that's what I tried to capture there with the clouds, um, mountains in the background, very New England, and um, that's... Well, you can space. bring another one up and show yes. show another Thomas Cole influence piece. This is piece. also a Cole um, influence, and let's see if we can get that. Um, so, this was I took a walk through Cold State Park, and that's in Bristol, it was Rhode just, Island. Yes, hmm? and it was right after a storm, and so I was able to experience the dark clouds passing through. And uh, this is what I came up with. Now, did you take reference photographs, or is this completely? Yes, oh, okay. I actually took a photograph, and I actually had to fold it, kind of like accordion style, to reduce the um, the image to fit the. Oh, that's interesting. To fit here, because yeah. I wanted this to be nice and nice to, and big. To kind of force the perspective yeah. a little bit. Yeah. So. Oh, that's very cool. So again, influenced by the. Thomas Cole by way of the Hudson River School, but yes. brought up to date and with your own special flair. Yeah. Okay. So that's what I have here. <clears throat> and then also from Colt State Park, a more contemporary looking piece, or at least I like the brambling um, berries. Yes. And um, this I had just completed mm, maybe about a week or so ago. And it was just an area in the marsh, um, the marshlands. And I, you know, I just, I like the way the um, bramble was just kind of making a nice arc shape. I had the berries, the colors worked really good together in the photo. So um, I just put this together and this is just. Well, the, the placement of the, the branches and the berries has a kind of an Asian feel to it. To me. Doesn't it? Yes. Doesn't it? Yeah. So that's and again, from photographs and then rendering it in your own style. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Never, never be afraid to use your references. Nope. I don't. But we get into more fanciful stuff. Yes, here, we do. So. Less related to nature and more related to your psyche. Uh, yeah. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow um, Another artist that I really um, took to one of his paintings. It was called um, Isle, Isle of the of Dead. The Dead from, yes. I believe you pronounce his name Brocken. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing is a he series. He was a very German and very dark painter. He and Goya, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> another Goya, one of Goya my Goya is faves. from another part of the uh, part of the continent, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember him as uh, Bachlin or something like that. Right, Bachlin. And, and uh, this one also has a kind of a cultural reference point that you'll have to explain. So this was based, um, his was based on um, a place in Italy. It was an English um, cemetery in Florence, Italy. Mm -hmm. And people say that it had something to do with his daughter passing. And so basically what this is, it's a takeoff from the Isle of the Dead. And um, it has to do with the death of communication. Correct. Now, being a gestalt and free association right. um, facilitator, yes. um, 
we, when we communicate, we actually do connect with the gestalt of the body, gestures, expressions, things of that nature. Yes. So this particular painting um, has to do with the loss of that. Right. Okay, and the grieving, the, because people are really becoming more alienated and isolated. And you made a shrine out of a uh, uh, cell phone. Yeah, yes. there's a cell phone in the background. Mm -hmm. We have the spirit of the lost soul um, in the foreground, only it's more of the loss of communication, mm -hmm. the soul of communication. Um, and then there's other pieces of symbolism in here with the apple um, and obviously the casket, uh, the keyboard in the foreground. I love symbolism. Um, so this I made up myself with him as a background. Then in the back we have the fire destruction right um, so um, so it's, it's all piece. it's all very symbolic of uh, loss and grieving and mourning exactly mm -hmm. exactly so there's that and then and I remember you vi you vividly played with the body with this one ah yes this was my first figure figure <coughs> in faces piece and I didn't want to do the same old same old so um, I decided to take pieces of faces, pieces of a face, and mm -hmm. put it in different places. And I started out with the golden mean. Yes. The golden mean is, is a, um, how an artist would put things on their canvas. It's a natural placement of nature, and it's basically nicely symbolized by the nautilus shell there. Yes, exactly. And within the shell, you have the iris of the eye, which is part of a face. You have the nose, the arms, the legs. And you the have, lips. And, yeah. Yep, mm -hmm. the person Torso. in the prone position. Yep. But in the center, you also have mathematical figures. Correct. So I played around with that um, for figures and faces. And this was fun. This was a lot of fun. So again, this was just out of the imagination. And we have, I love pumpkins, I love summer, the ocean, uh, and I put this together. And this is called Bye Bye Summer Blues. <laughs> I love the blues musically. So what we have is just the ocean coming to shore and we have a couple of pumpkins it's transitional of the season. Exactly. And I, I would say that you probably chose uh, red, white, and blue for a symbolic reason, which you can share with us. Um, actually, I was playing with the color wheel. Okay. Okay, with the blues and the oranges, and you had a little bit of the orangey brown in the inside, so that's what I was playing with. I just around. had a feeling that you were kind of uh, tying in the time of Fourth of July to the time of fall and transitioning from There, there was summer. that transition between July and August. You're yes. absolutely right. Yep, absolutely, so that, yep. that was a subconscious thing. Yep, yep. That was an expressive thing. Good one, Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> I can pre-associate with the best of them. You certainly can. <laughs> That's great. Well, we're getting close. We're running so, out of time, yeah. so do you have a couple more things? Um, or? Okay, I can do one oh, more. Oh, yeah, let's do that one, because that was what started our conversation. Yes, this is also a piece. How are we doing with positioning that? That, uh, that is symbolic of uh, your three goals that you are trapping. The three goals being symbolized by the red circles. Exactly. And being trapped somehow and, and blocked. Um, My goals were being blocked, yep, you know, because yep. the, the, the timing was wrong, but the energy was right. Right. <laughs> yeah. So this so was this, another This could expressive actually be piece. something that would help you work through something like that. Exactly. Now, if you put that down, we can we can say thank you for showing up today and working my with us and this was uh, fun. You, your website is on the screen and hopefully yes, we'll see more of your art soon thank you thank you you have a great day you too will do we're here with our second guest a uh, gentleman i've known for about 10 years his name is John Catula. I met him through the East Bay Met High School, where I get uh, where I work with interns. And John was an advisor there for a number of years, and we worked on several projects together, including drawing marathons. And he had a show at my place in Newport, and um, 
John is here today to show artwork that uh, is mostly recent, right? Uh, yeah, every, everything I brought today has been done probably within the last year and a half. Okay. And most of it probably within the last six months. Right. And John has quite a story. Uh, he kind of lived all over the country uh, and also um, you were in the Peace Corps twice. Yeah, my um, claim to fame is that I've been the oldest Peace Corps volunteer in two countries. I was um, in Honduras from 05 to 07, mm -hmm. where I turned 60. Yep. And then uh, about 10 years later, my wife and I decided to do Peace Corps again. And we were in Nicaragua from 2015 to 2018. And there I turned 70. Yeah. Yeah, we even, I, I know that you had a show at uh, AS220 that was uh, celebrating your 70th birthday. And yeah. it was called A Hundred Ways an Old Artist Can Die. Yes. And that was, <laughs> that was actually a fabulous show. You got all of your friends to participate, and it was really yeah, I asked I asked people to do artwork. Uh, based on imagining how I would die. <laughs> and they did get quite imaginative. <laughs> now, going back, how, how did you develop your interest in art and, and what was your, your background and, and uh, progress in that? Well, I, I think I've thought of myself as an artist since about third grade. Okay. And I don't know if you, if you did this, but in my third grade class, the boys used to play war yes. on a piece of paper. Okay. And what that involved was like drawing a battleship mm -hmm. and then drawing airplanes and having a line would mean that a shot had been fired. Okay. And then there was an explosion. And um, they, my friends figured out that I could draw the best ships <laughs> and the best airplanes. So I think that's how I started to think of myself as an artist. I can remember drawing that, but not the interactive part of it. It sounds like proto role playing. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. And um, I know that you've been recently heavily influenced by your uh, experiences in Central America, and a lot of the artwork that you're showing today is um, going to be in a show that will be in the uh, Out of the Box Gallery in uh, Jamestown, Rhode Island. And yeah. um, behind you, this appears to be some sort of ceremonial mask? Yeah, so uh, Nicaragua has a very rich tradition of dance okay. um, called Baile Folklorica. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is done wearing dance masks. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was living in Managua, I lived near one of the better universities in Central America, and they had a history institute that had a collection of antique masks. And so I spent about six months going in, borrowing masks from their collection, drawing them, photographing them, and then turning them into this series of paintings. Mm -hmm. And there's, uh, I completed six of them. Uh, I had hoped to do more, but um, I ended up leaving Nicaragua at the, before I could uh, get them all done. But I did manage to get the paintings back and up to the States. So would this be some sort of a sympathetic magic uh, approach to dance or evoking the spirit of a bull? Or Yeah, mm -hmm. this, the ones that look like this are called Toritos, okay. little bulls. That's right, yep. And then you have another one who's a representative of a human face. And I think this is um, representing the, the Europeans coming into oh, okay. Central wow. America. Oh, okay, wow, all right. And it would have been called Hoven or Youth. Okay. So it's a, a young Spanish guy. And the, the eyebrows and the mustaches are very expressive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you, you have some of those, and then you have this rarely unique piece of uh, clothing here. Uh, 
Do you want to talk about that? So this this you bring that up and I show will. It. Let me describe the the show that I'm gonna yes. be putting together. Um, I'm gonna use the different elements to build figures. Right. So the the mask will be the head of the figure. Okay. I have some hand painted t shirts. Which you'll show us in a little bit. Or which one will of be them. the torso. Yep. The legs will be uh, these. I'll also show you some paintings of feet and some paintings of hands. Okay. But these are all going to go together to form these uh, six different figures. Body images. Yeah. And using your artwork to incorporate it. And this will all be tied into your experience in uh, Nicaragua. They're all, they're all images <coughs> of things that were important to me when I was living there or, or things that I got interested in and wanted to learn more about. And some of the, some of the portraits I've seen are, are uh, political uh, revolution and revolutionary figures. So all of the genes have <coughs> a, a picture of a, a Nicaraguan hero on them. And, um, and these, these images are pretty prevalent. I mean, this is my version of a picture of Ernesto Cardinal. Okay. But there'll be many pictures of Ernesto Cardinal all over Nicaragua, because he's a national hero. Well, tell us a little bit about Ernesto Cardinal for the people, the uninformed uh, gringos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was a Catholic priest uh -huh. uh, who was part of the revolution. Uh, the, the church actually uh, defrocked him, or gave him the gave him the choice of staying a priest or being a revolutionary. Oh, because he became too political, and he chose to to be a revolutionary. Yeah. Um, and after the revolution, he was minister of culture for many years, and um, so you, still living, still writing. You. Uh, you represented these uh, people because they're incredibly passionate uh, towards their causes. That and and because they're part of the iconography of Nicaragua. Now, when you say that uh, he's represented frequently, would he be on uh, posters or or uh, murals or? Yeah, murals. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they would do heroes of the revolution, and they'd have a series of these these men. Yeah, and I think part. I think it's it's part of it's it's a way of passing on the culture um, and making keeping these people alive, living, he's, making he's still, history live. Yeah, yeah. he's still living, yes. but a lot of them are people who it's important to remember in the country. Right, and you have other body parts represented too. Yeah. So let me show you. Um, one of the T-shirts. Mm -hmm. Oh, that would be your uh, your foot. These. Uh, well, this is my oh, flip. That was your your torso with your yeah, flip flop. With my flip flop, <laughs> called uh, chancletas in Spanish. Um, but it's you know I probably spent seventy five percent of my time walking around in flip flops. Well, because it's so warm. Yeah, Indeed. the town. The town that I was a Peace Corps volunteer in was called Chinandega. Mm -hmm. And if you look up Chinandega in the travel guides, it says, well, there's, there's really no reason to go there unless you want to know what it feels like to be a rotisserie chicken. Oh, yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, I remember seeing pictures of you on Facebook and you looked like you had been, uh, you were experiencing some heat and humidity. <laughs> yes. Yes. And then um, here's one other T-shirt image that I can show you. Oh, nice. And, and this is actually, for me, this is actually also a reference to Diego Rivera. Yes. Who painted a lot of cowl lilies. Yep. And uh, he's one of my favorite artists. Yes. And a big influence on me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you were talking about the the rooster as your your spirit animal, and I remember you doing lots <laughs> of paintings of roosters when when we were 
more together a few years ago. Yeah, there's, there's, I still do them. They, they still show up. I've, I've even seen, seen you influence other artists into painting them. I think our friend Casey Wybus just did some rooster prints in her <laughs> printmaking class. Yeah. So you have more, more work to show, and we're kind of getting closer. How are we? Uh, well, we have some, a few minutes, but I want to get in as much as we can. Well, let me just show you um, <coughs> a couple of these feed images. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. Those colors are popping. Yeah. I like the outlines of the the whole shins and feet. Yeah, so it's almost it's almost impossible to talk about Central America these days without mentioning immigration Correct. and migrants. And uh, so it was important in these paintings for me to put some emphasis on feet, on Traveling. People walking, yes. moving from one place to another. Crossing borders. I see you have a border represented there. Uh, Maybe that was not intentional. It was not intentional, <laughs> but, but I'm going to claim it was All now right. that you said it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the first thing I thought of when you saw that showed the two colors, that hot orange and that, that kind of ochre popping with the orange popping underneath it. Okay. And... Um, let me show you. I know that we're running out no, of time. No, we, we got some. We got time. I just didn't want you to neglect showing the work. So then, there's also. I've also been doing a series of these hands. So there'll be six figures, and there are, the, so there are twelve hands. These the hands look like they're um, separate. They're they're kind of. Uh, have maps in them almost. They look like topological maps. That was uh, that was one reference that I did intend. Yes, yes. Uh, I hope they also look um, like working hands, like they've... The, like they've, the gnarling to the point of looking yeah. almost arthritic. Yeah. Yeah, the, the hands of someone who's used them their entire lives. Yeah, I can't wait to see what these look like assembled together. I just can't even imagine. They must have high ceilings in the gallery. They do. <laughs> oh, good. I haven't seen it yet. I'm looking forward to that. And, and again, the working hands. And uh, um, the, the spiral, does that have any uh, significance? Um. I see you've used that in a I couple think, of places. I think that's more just design uh -huh. and wanting wanting them to look lively and and interesting more than having. Because it definitely a draws your meaning. eye when you see something like that. Right. And um, you have one more set of feet over there. Yeah, if you'd like to see those. Yeah, yeah. And again. The traveling and the, the the feet and the hands and the head all all going together. John, I really want to thank you for showing up today and sharing your work with us. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing your show and and looking forward to seeing more of your ventures in the future. Well, thank you for inviting me. It was it was fun to uh, show it to you and. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how it looks all together too. <laughs> And that wraps it up for another episode of Art Matters, and uh, thank you for uh, watching.